Patreon talent. Ladies and gentlemen, your guest speaker for today, your hands and minds, start the clapping, start screaming like there's no more load shedding. Start cheering like you don't have debit orders. Please give it up for Ryan McLaren. Thank you. Thanks, Dylan, um, and good afternoon to everyone. Um, firstly, to the Department of Education, uh, members of the Department of Education, members of Cricket South Africa, um, Mr. Johan van Heerden and Mr. Sander Snyders from Free State Cricket, and obviously to all the coaches and coordinators of KFC, thank you very much for the opportunity to, um, to chat to you today. Um, I am entering into the, the graveyard shift in cricket terms following all the speakers that we've had, so I'm going to try and make it as light and as quick as possible. Um, but obviously, um, if I could leave you with a bit of um, insight and, um, and advice, it would be great. Um, so my journey with, with, with cricket, and, and more specifically mini cricket, uh, in 1990 it started. I was about seven years old in, um, in Kimberley, of all places. Um, when we went to the showgrounds and Mr. Ali Bacher rocked up and we were playing our first game of mini cricket over there. Um, as you know, you fast forward a couple of years, you go through the school system, go to great college, um, end, end up going to the National Academy um, and playing a professional career, which recently ended with the Knights. And obviously having the honor of representing South Africa was great. And fast forward that to 2017, uh, a few years ago, my son, A development program well there's your answer right there because it's so years the amount of approaches that you've produced has been phenomenal um, it has been exceptional to see also the the role that the coaches play as well as the coordinators in performing and making sure that this concept and this program really is successful um, the most important thing for me today is the coaches and and the coordinators but and also just to be able to say to acknowledge what you do and and the contribution that you make um i'd like to maybe just read you a story something that i found the other day which was really insightful for me uh, as a person uh, and meant a lot because i get the i probably as as coaches you sometimes wonder what is it that your role is and what is it that you do and and why you do what you do and I'm going to read you this little piece that I found the other day, which I thought would be really valuable to you um, as a coach. I'll just give me a chance to open it up. All right, it says here, the dinner guests were sitting around the table discussing life. One man, a CEO, tried to explain the problem with college athletics. He argued, what's a kid going to learn from someone who decided his best option in life was to be a coach? He reminded the other dinner guests that they say that coaches, those who can't play are those who coach. To stress his point, he said to another guest, you're a coach, be honest, what do you make? Having a reputation for honesty and frankness, the guest replied, and at this stage the coach was getting pretty fired up. You want to know what I make? I make kids work harder than they ever thought they could. I make a C plus feel like he's a winner of a medal of honor. I make kids run through 90 minutes of practice and sweat. I make kids turn dreams into reality. You want to know what I make? I make kids wonder. I make them question. I make them criticize. I make them apologize and I mean it. I make them cooperate and I make them competitive and respectful. I make them show all their work in front of hostile crowds and perfect their acts of sportsmanship. And I make them understand that if you have the will to follow your dreams, should anyone try to judge you by the mistake that you make, you must pay no attention because you tried and gave it your best. I make teams from individuals who work together to build success. And he paused for a moment and he said to the CEO, so what do you make? So if you want to know if you have any value in terms of what you contribute in the system towards KFC and towards the lives of, of these little kids that you so affect in, I think, as you said, 126,000 kids, there's your answer right there. Um, I, my journey has, has gone, as I've said to you, as a, as a player, I've been through the ranks. I've gone through the mini cricket program. I've played professional cricket, um, played for the Proteas. And there were definitely, throughout your journey as a cricketer, you have so many roles that you play, or sessions and KFC pro, uh, um, 
matches that you tend to. I remember those KFC matches against the Proteas, the kids versus the Proteas. Um, I remember having to attend many coaching clinics that uh, that we had to to be and, and represent. Um, and many times people would look and say, oh, but these are just the, the protests and they're just doing it in front of the cameras to look nice. And I'll take you a couple of years later down the line. Now I've got my coaching hat on and I try and work out and I realize and appreciate more the value of what coaches do because you think, oh, I've played international cricket. I know exactly what's going on in the game. What is it to really coach a kid? And what I've le learned in the recent past, being my role at Gray College at the moment, where I help out from under nine all the way under, to under 19, and that coaching itself is an art. And to the language that you speak to under nine kid, as opposed to the under 19, is a total different ball game. So I might have the knowledge and the insight as a player from a technical point of view, but to have the ability to relate to a child who is seven years old, old or nine years old or even then 19 is two different places that you've got to be able to or learn and acquire the skill to be able to pass on your knowledge. The other part of it to me that's really important is the passion and the attitude. As Mr. Phil Under said over there, being fresh. I'll tell you what, every time I come across a guy like John T. Rhodes, who you've seen now is coaching in the IPL, that guy oozes energy. And we went to a master's festival in India in March, which was cut short by COVID. And this guy was bouncing around and to such an extent that everyone else, be it old and having carried a bit of extra kilos and a bit of weight, was also now full of energy just because of the influence. And that you sometimes also don't always realize that your attitude, but the energy and the intensity that you bring is massive towards what effect that has on the kids. Right, so here we go. COVID arrives and COVID has been part of our lives. And as we now know that it is, it is no, it has been a tremendous effect on industries, on people's lives. And again, I must also my, echo my condolences to people on this platform today who have had either been affected by the pandemic and we maybe lost loved ones or relatives. Um, they, it obviously was very tragic and disappointing and a sad loss to everyone. On the practical side of things, as a coach and as a player, um, you've got to ask yourself the question, well, how have you reacted to it? And maybe as coaches, we've had an opportunity to reflect and use this time to upskill and improve our skills as coaches. I was fortunate to sit in a meeting with Mr. Falapi Ratsafola, who is the MD of Coca-Cola Beverages South Africa. And his message to us in the meeting was to say, never let, or never let a crisis go to waste. My question to you is, what have you done in this time and what have you learned and how have you used this opportunity to maybe improve your skill and your, the way you maybe communicate with a kid um, or have you used it as an excuse? My, my feeling, what I've learned having spoken to a lot of people in the recent past now is about being productive and increasing your productivity but also your efficiency. And maybe again there, you're, I'm piggybacking on Mr. What, what Mr. Philander said is in terms of your planning. Maybe your sessions can be improved and can be planned better. I want to take you back a couple of the lessons, maybe just to follow on my favorite coaches and the people that I've learned from the most and the most influential coaches that I have. And I've made a list of a couple of things that I can maybe leave with you. Is that the first thing about my, my the, the coaches that I had that had the most influence on me was the fact that I could trust them and the fact that I felt safe. The fact that I could go to them and speak to them about anything without worrying about consequences of speaking to them and i think if that if you can if you can install that faith and that safety and trust within your players i think you'll go a long way in terms of the relationship and being able to maximize their potential second part is honesty and obviously honesty goes along with the trust honesty i felt if i had spoken to gary kirsten i knew exactly where i stood and i knew that if i'd done well or i'd done poorly i knew exactly what he said and that I could trust what he said. He also challenged me, he also helped me improve in every aspect of my game, be that mentally or physically. And I understand at different age groups and different levels, you might need to communicate that in a different way. Then the last part about it is fun and enjoyment. And this is where I tie into what Mr. Rafik Ishmael said in the beginning about the, the attraction and retention of little kids at the age of nine or 10. That to me probably is the most important thing is about your role as a coach is, is how do you attract and how do you retain these, these little kids? 
I tell you what, what kept me into the game, I, you can say to me, yeah, I was lucky because I had a father that played provincial cricket and I grew up next to the field. But yet I had coaches and people that instilled the love and the fun of the game and that's what brought me back to the next session. My question to you is, how can you continue that? How can you continue to improve to make sure that that little kid that you have a relationship with, who probably you are a leader to, how can you bring him back to that next session? Because once he's part of that KFC program and he wants to come back, he then goes back to the Wanderers and he goes back to the Free State Cricket Stadium or the Mongolian Oval, as it's now called. And that's, that's the challenge to you. How do you bring them back? So we've spoken about coaches and about what they what they mean to us. Um, we've spoken about COVID and the opportunities. Um, I want to give maybe if you say to me, okay, well, we've spoken about all of this and then you say, well, what advice could I give you if I was sitting in your position and having learned what I've learned as a cricketer and as a person? My first thing is what we want to say to you is that remember that not all the kids that you coach today or tomorrow are going to end up playing professional cricket. There's a very small percentage, as we know, that go through to play professional cricket. And like there you learn a lesson from a guy like Pite, who, and I was one of those as well, who was a late bloomer in terms of playing international cricket. I only, I only managed to play for South Africa at the age of 27 or 29. So it's not going to be for everyone, but the role that you have as a coach is the life lessons that you teach them now through the coaching, because you end up teaching them to be doctors or accountants or medical staff, you name it, any industry that they can go in and that the life lesson that you teach them today is going to give them the tools to be able to cope in the future. The, less, the next thing I want to maybe can teach you or help you with is to teach them to never give up and that you are going to fail, but failure is one thing, but it's more important to learn the lesson and it's about how you teach them the lesson out of what happened, which is important. To share each other's successes is probably the next thing. You know, that's the one part of it that probably started the whole thing for me playing mini cricket is the fact that I could enjoy with each other, with my teammates and playing and having fun and seeing someone else do well. The one important part, the other part is the acceptance of the failure. And yeah, I quote a guy like Hashim Amla, who I got the greatest respect for as a teammate or as a man, is that he treated failure and success exactly the same. You never got him overexcited. When he won, I scored 150 or 200 like he so often did, but nor did he also get too down on himself when things didn't go well, because he was a great sportsman. And if you can teach your kids and the people to understand that success and failure could be handled in the same way, it means that they consistently will perform a lot better as they grow older. As I've mentioned, good sportsmanship. Now, good sportsmanship, sportsmanship here to me ties in with the respect for the game. And probably the most important part of where we are South Africans today is respect for each other, respect for the opponents, respect for your coaches, for your umpires, respect for each other. And when I say respect for each other, I mean this racially, culturally, um, religiously, that there's a place for each and every one of us here and that no one is more important than, than anyone else. And, and that to me is a massively important part. And probably something I can leave with you. Yes, to say you played for South Africa was great, but I can tell you that at one stage in the South African dressing room, we had such a variety of races and cultures, but yet we found a way to get together and get together and win games for South Africa. So there is definitely, this is a platform again, where we can show each other that there is hope and that there is a way to work together if we accept who we are and that no one is better than anyone else, okay? I'll leave you with the last couple of things. A, a coach will impact more people in a year than what an average person will impact in his life. The last thing I'll say to you is a good coach will change a game and a great coach will change a life. Again, I emphasize to you today and say to you that it's, a, it's an immense value that you guys have as coaches and coordinators and I hope and I and my, my dream for, for KFC going forward in this relationship with Cricket South Africa is that we'll continue to produce many more pro tiers going forward. Thanks very much for the opportunity. It's been a great day and great seminar to be part of.